Welcome back everybody to episode 17 of our Tech It 2 playthrough. In this episode I will be rebuilding most of this HV solar array factory in order to optimize it and upgrade a bunch of the components. You can see I have various spots where overflow is a massive issue and it's not working perfectly as well as these overflow chests which I was trying to get to work but they don't work perfectly either. I have some inefficiencies with all of my machines because I'm not using any of these um, overclocker upgrades so I will use those as well as over here my UU matter production. You can see there's no scrap in here. There should always be scrap in there so that it goes faster. So I am going to try and fix all of that. First up, I will start with this UU matter production area, just this uh, pink outlined area. And in order to fix my problem, I think I'm going to try and use different types of pipes. So over here I have the logistics pipes instead of these uh, project red transportation pipes. So they're a different mod and hopefully they'll allow it to work a little better. So I'm going to switch all these pipes out and then hopefully see if that fixes it. So this is what I ended up with for my scrap production. You can see all these recyclers are working non-stop at max speed and the scrap is immediately pulled out and sent into my mass fabricators. And uh, the dirt is automatically pulled using import upgrades so that there's never any overflow of dirt in my pipes. Unfortunately since I have 500 HV solar panels connected to these mass fabricators. They move extremely fast on their own. So even though I have 24 compact and recyclers working, they can barely supply any mass fabricators. So you can see any scrap in here is just immediately used and you don't even get to see that it's being used. However, at least now all my uh, compacting recyclers are working instead of before they were just kind of sitting there full of scrap and I have this set up here if I ever have any more scrap than is in here so these get full of scrap they just automatically get deleted so I'll never have a bunch of lag being caused by scrap overflowed in these pipes mainly during nighttime because all my power is solar power so that is my UU Matter setup. I will change this export um, at some point, but not until I redo this whole area. So now I'm going to work on the solar panel area, which uh, just this blue outline makes solar panels. I'm going to use a bunch of quantum upgrades to make my machines a little faster, as well as use a different pipe set to try and make everything work just a little better. Just uh, some friendly advice if you are making a big network like this for yourself. If you request an infinite amount of the final product, so I put solar panel and I said infinite, so that means the system will make as many solar panels as it can until this is filled. If you do that, then It'll send all the materials you need, all at the same time, and um, drop them on the ground. So now I have thousands of items used to make solar panels. Just I, I picked them all up, I didn't know what else to do, so now I'm going to have to refeed all of those back into the system. So don't use infinite. That's, that's all. So this is what the final solar panel factory looks like. I think it's much cleaner, looks a lot better. And best of all, I don't have any items floating around in these pipes causing lag. So that is always a plus. Over here I have one extractor with 22 quantum overclocker upgrades in it in order to make all my rubber. And then it's placed in this chest. This stack is four crafting tables dedicated only to copper cables because you need so many of them. 
And then this stack here is two crafting tables making electronic circuits because you need two electronic circuits for every solar panel. This chest is a overflow chest. Has some random stuff. I actually put all of this in here because it was in my inventory. But uh, it works much better because the item sync module just pulls items from the network and the provider module just outputs them. So it'll use these up before it crafts any more of these items. This is where we make the RE batteries. This is where we make machine blocks. I have two electric furnaces because I need so much refined iron. This is where that goes. Over here I'm actually making furnaces because I switched the recipe from three refined iron ingots, an iron furnace, and an RE battery. And I switched it to this one which just needs an RE battery, a furnace, and a machine block. And that's just so I don't have to make these iron furnaces, which kind of just sit there. And it's an extra crafting step, where here I can just make furnaces in my energy condenser. So that's made in here. Uh, these are just all the resources I need. And uh, the last, last machine I have is a macerator, making coal dust. Same setup as the others. And finally, we make the solar panels right here. So I'll show you how quick it is. Just take these two stacks of solar panels out and they will be replaced. Uh, okay. I got worried for a second, but it's all good. Alright, there we go. So the the uh, system works perfectly, it'll pull exactly what it needs for whatever you request. That's why if you set it to infinite, it'll just request an insane amount of resources. And everything will be crafted, and then it'll make solar panels pretty quick. This is faster than before too, which is great. So yeah, that's my solar panel setup. I'll leave that like that for now. This area here, I will actually... Now that I kind of know what I'm doing with these pipes, I'll set it up a lot nicer and I won't be all over the place. I'll have all the energy condensers on one side, and then all the crafting tables on the other side. And hopefully this area will look a lot nicer. So I will go do that. This part does tend to get a little messy. Alright, so here is my EV transformer setup. You can see it's a lot simpler, a lot less clutter. No overflow anywhere, so this is pretty nice. I've got all the raw materials I need on this side, just hooked up to supplier pipes. Just any material I need to craft from scratch. This chest here is refined iron. I have a furnace right behind it that feeds it, cooks iron into refined iron. These four chests here are just leftovers from the setup I destroyed before, so these resources will be used up and then I'll just remove these four chests. Here is uh, where all the crafting happens. So I actually make more copper cables and more electronic circuits over here so I don't steal from this system. And this right here, anything, so electronic circuits, and up here, energy crystals, if they're used in more than one crafting table, I found having them sit in a chest and be pulled is much easier than trying to supply it from one crafting table, because it gets kind of mixed up. So the electronic circuits go to the HV transformer, as well as the advanced circuits. So just doing it this way keeps it a little simpler. And, uh, yeah, works. I'll take these out. It should pull everything it needs to make a few more. It also looks pretty cool as, it work as it's uh, working. And there you go. That's, uh, that's how it works. <laughs> so that was pretty, pretty nice. I like this a lot better than the last setup, so now... I just have to finish my IV transformer setup, and then I'll be done. Here is what our final IV transformer station looks like. 
we've got some crafting tables on the left here. Make the iridium ore, turn it into iridium plates. Make our iridium stone with the plates. Make our plasma cores, turn those into plasma cables. And then make rare earth chunks that we turn into dead magnets in here. The dead magnets are taken to the charged electrolyzer. They're charged into normal magnets. Those are obviously used for the plasma core. Uh, this makes our plasma cells. And then these are our two final crafting tables for the PESD. And then that is used to make the IV transformer. I left the original three crafting tables here for the final three crafts, which is low voltage into the medium voltage, and then finally the high voltage. I just left these here because they're kind of nice and they can hold quite a bit of inventory. So I have these set to just deliver their stacks. And of course this final one will hold a whole lot of stacks of HV solar panels, whereas if I was using one of these, it doesn't hold anything after it crafts the product. Overall, uh, I'd say this was pretty good success. Everything seems to be running pretty well. It's not dropping items. It's not causing much lag. And these, uh, I think, look really nice just to watch the factory working like this. If I were to build another factory, I would definitely use these logistics pipes instead of these Project Red transportation pipes. I find these ones are just quite a bit more effective and uh, do exactly what you want them to do. I will be making a quick tutorial on how to use these pipes because they are quite a bit different than the other ones. And other than that, we are almost at 200 subscribers now, which is awesome thanks a lot i haven't uploaded in a while but people kept telling me to upload more so here you go and uh hope to see you later